Hi, I'm Mara Webster with the DC Environmental Film Festival, and I'm so excited today to be talking to the team behind the film Zero Gravity. We are joined by the director, Thomas Verite, as well as subjects from the film, Tana Morcoida, sorry, and Carol Gonzalez, um, who you will recognize from just watching the film. Um, and Thomas, I wanted to start by asking how you first became aware of, of Tanner's program, of this competition, and everything that these amazing kids are all working on, and, and what it was that sparked the initial interest in making this film. Uh, so I found out about the program probably, I, I think a little, uh, after Tanner probably did. I, I mean, I, we met at orientation uh, actually, and that was kind of like the, the orientation scene in the film where Tanner, as well as the rest of the, the California, uh, teachers that are participating are learning about what they're about to embark on. And like space and their faces are of, of, you know, sort of like disbelief about what they're going to kind of try to accomplish was probably what mine looked like behind the camera a little bit. I was doing a lot of learning uh, during that time, exactly. Like I was, I was picking it up a little bit because it was, it was, I sort of had discovered the program and was like, let's go shoot and see if we can make something out of it. And then the orientation kind of fulfilled and explained a lot that it was like, okay, let's go, let's do this. And I met Tanner there and um, I loved how he uh, talked about just uh, space in general. I have the same kind of passion for, uh, the cosmos and our place in it, and and um, and he had mentioned his grandfather as well, um, and that that like and it was something that that he had like been that passion had been passed down to him, and and that was a it was something that I just never forgot, and that um, really gave me the confidence to just let's let's see where Tanner takes his students, and and uh, and so everybody kind of came from that. Uh, it was Tanner Tanner was doing his thing, and I tagged along. <laughs> I love that. And it's it's really interesting to hear, Tanner, that it wasn't actually that long after you started working in this program that Thomas kind of heard about it and that collaboration came about. So especially kind of going through all of this for the first time, what were those first conversations with Thomas? Because there's a lot of logistical elements behind the scenes as well. And I imagine a lot of it was you also talking to, you know, students like Carol and a lot of the parents who went, are in the film as well and, and, and explaining what that's going to be. We're going to have a camera crew in the room with us. They're going to be following this whole thing. Um, and so what did a lot of that that conversation look like between the two of you? Um, yeah, actually, so I, uh, we started a summer camp and the kids didn't know anything about the, uh, the documentary or the film crew for that matter um, until I got them into the program. So imagine me sitting in front of a summer camp of about 80 kids. Um, we had this Star Wars-esque trailer for this robotics program. And I was like, hey, anybody who wants to be a part of this program for five weeks, uh, I'm gonna be headed over to this room and you know, we're gonna start talking about space and robots and um, it's gonna be quite the adventure. We have a trip to NASA planned. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun, who's down? And Carol and about 14 other students uh, made that walk to that classroom. And then from there, then it was, okay, uh, by the way, there's a film crew um, that's gonna be following us around. Um, so we're gonna have to uh, get these um, waivers signed uh, by your parents. And I, I think it was better to do it that way um, I think that the parents probably also appreciated that they wanted to be astronauts before movie stars. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, he made it, he made it really easy. Uh, Thomas has a real, uh, well, excuse the pun, but down to earth vibe to him. Um, and so, you know, we were able to, uh, you know, connect pr pretty early on and I was able to kind of see his vision for, you know, what did he, what he wanted to do um, with this footage and like what kind of things he wanted to capture. And I was like, oh, that's what we do all the time in after school and summer camp. And so um, like going like right up into when the camera showed up, it was a little nerve wracking because, you know, it was, uh, I'm going to be, my class and my program are going to be representing <laughs> um, summer schools and summer camps um, and what we can do. And so there was a bit of pressure there, but the kids, the kids made it easy um, because you, you realize that, you know, the cameras don't matter and that, you know, it's all about the kids and the fun time that they're having. And then it just, you know, yeah, they do it. They make the magic happen themselves. So, yeah. 
That's really great to hear that it was it was all about the kids being part of the program first and foremost. And and Carol, I was interested in what that experience was like for you. You know, did you have much of a sense of what it was going to be like having a crew following you around? Because again, you know, you're stepping into this new environment, this new program, doing all these really challenging elements, and then you have a camera crew there as well, and and they also followed you home and and were talking with you alongside your family as well as being there in the classroom during the program and during the competition. Um, to be honest, I, I honestly did not know what I was getting myself into <laughs> when I first joined, because um, like as a kid, you can't really grasp like how much that was going to impact you. Like even then, if I did know, like if I was older, I still wouldn't have like been able to comprehend how much like it's impacted my life even now. So it's like as a kid, all I, foc I was focused on is like, oh, how cool there's cameras. Like I didn't really like cameras following me around that much because it made me nervous, but it's still very cool to see like the, it was like big film cameras following you around, getting to work with robots and stuff. It was just like every little kid's dream to do, especially during summer camp, because we were, we were all there just to like have a place to be during the summer and to have like that opportunity rather than just like going through the summer, regular summer day. It was very, it was very nice. And I'm like very appreciative of that. And you were just saying there that you didn't kind of know how much it was going to impact your life. Um, is a lot of that just from the experience of, of the film being made, of going through Tanner's program, or is that partly to do with, you know, people seeing the film, the conversations that you're getting to have, the people that you've been meeting because of that? Um, I would say it's a little bit of everything. So I feel like it's just, it really allowed me to see what I want to pursue when I'm older. So it made, it made that whole question of what I'm going to do a bit easier. But like it also it's like I've been able to start um, advocating for things that I care about, about like having other kids just like me interested in science and space and all that, just giving them more opportunities as well. So it's given me like a platform to be able to allow them to have opportunities like me as well. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just very nice to see like little kids because um, one of the previous film festivals, there was a kid who asked me a question. And it wasn't like as impactful. It wasn't like, it was a small question, but it was still very, very like important to me to see that kids are like taking like my story into account and like have allowing it to shape their lives even just a little bit. And that's like very important to me because if I'm able to make at least like one small difference in someone's life, then I feel like I've fulfilled my purpose at least. That's really amazing to hear. Um, and coming back to you, Thomas and Tanner, you know, one of the things that I always appreciate with documentaries that are, are bringing us into a specific world, you know, like this, we're, you're bringing us into the specialist subject of STEM, science, robotics, space, um, is that for audience members who, you know, have a base understanding or are fairly new to a lot of elements of that subject matter that it's presented in a way that you really understand and engage with it. And I thought that especially through the way that we see Tanner teaching the kids that, that it was very easy, it was very accessible. We really had an understanding of what acts, what they're actually trying to achieve, what they're working on programming throughout the thing. You know, we really got to see a lot of that educational development as well. And so for the two of you, for you, Thomas, in directing it and for you, Tanner, you know, in, in having this crew following you and, and being on camera, but also talking to Thomas and giving him a lot of details about what you were teaching in the classroom. Um, how did you want to set about making sure that this film felt very accessible to audiences, could really bring them into this world and engage them in the same way that in the program you're engaging all of the kids in the room? It's a good question. Um, it was a, definitely um, one of the more challenging aspects of making this film was, was explaining the game itself. Um, it was like if I was going to make a basketball movie, um, but you know, having to stop down and like sort of explain that, oh, if you shoot it from the three point line, it's three points, you know, and like this is a free throw, like, like just the rules, and like that was complicated to, to present in an entertaining way. And, and to be honest, it took me a little bit, it took me a lot, it took me a lot longer than them uh, to, you know, I think the kids, like they were, they were ahead of me most of the time. Um, and I'm filming things and then going and looking at the footage after and be like, okay, what happened that day? How did, okay, this is what they accomplished. Oh, they docked it. Okay. Now, because there's so many things going on in my head, um, just like trying to capture the the moments and the like sort of the genuine uh, like development of, of, of how fast they all like just learned and like took this in. They were like sponges. It was like amazing to come back every week and see, see like how far they had progressed from like the last week or how much that they, they sort of, taken all of that information from week one and applied it to week six or five. I mean, you know, and like, 
it was it was it was really impressive so for for me i just wanted to do it justice i wanted to feel like the film represented their journey um as much as possible and then uh well and then for me i i come from a a, a background of running sports leagues and doing um sports camps and stuff on the weekends and stuff uh so it was really nice to i mean the competition side of the tournament um it really called on me to be a, a coach to these guys and really make them into a team and so that part of the learning process uh it, it just adds to it because you know you're like oh we want to represent our school district our our summer camp we want to we want to go out there and you know we're going to wear our, our red campbell shirts and we're going to get off this bus and we're going to know what we're talking about and um i think that that really uh drove them through the experience like there was a lot of fun things like you know making water rockets and uh you know controlling r2d2s and you know moving around and and, and having fun with it um but the but recognizing that each one of the kids uh has something special to bring to a team much like a basketball team or football team you're like yeah somebody who's strong at defense or you got somebody who's strong at shooting or somebody who's strong at pass passing um these kids uh there's a few of them um that had these like leadership skills and so i actually kind of made them the, our our captains of smaller teams and so that's how they were able to compete against each other and that did really drive their learning um, because they were like, oh, we're going we're, we're gonna to have this strategy. Man, it's, it's like five years since we did this. But it was like, oh, we're going to have this strategy. It's called the campfire strategy, where we're going to go get this, the large item. Then we're going to take it back. We're going to camp, and we're going to have s'mores. So that's going to be our camp strategy. And then this other team was like, we're just going to get the big ones. We're just going to go all out. We're going to get the big, the, you know, the big items. Um, and so that, that competitiveness uh, definitely helped it out a lot. Um, cause then I, I, I knew that, um, from coaching teams before. So. I mean, it is an amazing program with all of the things that, that everybody gets to learn and try for the first time. And Carol, you know, with that, what were some of the things that you were really kind of learning for the first time throughout this program or that you were really surprised to learn that you had the skills in, in doing from being in Tanner's program? Um, to be honest at that time, I had way too much confidence for a sixth grader in terms of academics um Love so it's it. like and like being independent just because it's like my circumstances of having to like rely on myself for school mm -hmm. um so it was um it was very nice but also very it's like eye-opening having to work with a lot of people and like equally collaborate so it's mm -hmm. like in the moment it's like a lot of us struggled with that but I feel like it's very nice. It was very nice to be able to um, collaborate like that because like even now it's like that idea of how like everyone's able to bring something to the table. It's like allows me like to like take those skills that I learned from there. And like I've been still using them even to this day where since I'm in a lot of like leadership positions, I'm like um, I make sure to um, let everyone know that like what they're doing is like for a reason that I place them in something for a specific reason. So like everything Tanner was teaching us, I've been applying it in my own life and just making sure that everybody else is like, feels like they're, they're needed because they are, and they're there for a reason. That's, that's amazing to hear. Thomas, I also, you know, one of the things about making a documentary film is you have no idea where certain things are gonna go. You know, you don't know how, where are they gonna place in this competition? How far are they gonna go? You know, are all the kids gonna stay there throughout the entire program? There's, there's a lot of unknown elements in coming into making a film like this. And so how much of a sense did you have or how much were you planning about the overall arc of the film? Cause there's certain beats that you know, okay, this is when the competition is gonna be. So this is what we're working towards. This is what the goal is. These are the kids that we're gonna try and follow throughout the film. Um, and how much of, of kind of the overall structure of the film that came together was something that you found a little bit later on when you were editing the film? Um, so, well, because of the tournament itself, that gave us, a, um, a, you know, sort of a foundation, a spine to follow. Um, that, and I always knew that that would be kind of, you know, we'd always know that this week was going to be the results weekend. And then there's the finals this weekend. You know, we're going to, like, there's a NASA trip, like, at this one point. But, like, what would happen, and, of course, as a documentary, it's, it's unfolding in front of you. And... Um, and I think I only tried to get them to do something like again once or twice and it never really worked out because they were kids. And so they'd like, you know, the moment that you're like, hey, can you walk around that corner again or something? Then they start jumping around and 
being aware that the cameras are out. So, uh, so I realized very quickly that I only had one shot all the time. Um, and that was, uh, for me, just, um, that was part of the challenge and fun on my side is always trying to be in the right place at the right time uh, before anybody else knew that like what was going to happen and sort of kind of guessing. But as far as where they went in as, as a class, um, you know, I sort of had hoped that, that, uh, that they would be engaged enough, even if they lost to want to go to the finals. And, and, you know, that was something that I, um, I, I just, you know, when I met Tanner, it was, a, it was sort of like I was trusting my gut a little bit. I kind of felt that, um, you know, there's subjects that I remember as a kid not being that interested in. But if the, if the um, educator uh, was excited and passionate, then I would all of a sudden perk up. And so that and Tanner made me feel that way immediately. So to me, I was like, well, if he can get his kids engaged, then they'll they'll stick it through. And that, that was a little bit of, of faith, um, because, of course, you know, they could have decided not to go to the finals after, um, after losing and, uh, you know, in the, in the regional competition and not collaborate at all with the other team that won. And like, you know, it, the movie could have just died then, but it's, it's too. They were, you know, pumped enough to like, keep it going. And, and, you know, their strategy was similar to the strategy of the team that won. And like, they were like excited to make it their own um, and see, that experiment in space, um, and it, and you know, that's all really them. I mean, I d did my best to 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 kind of be there when I um, in the right place at the right time. But some things are were magic, um, like the the kids working together. That was great. Absolutely, and one of the things that's really wonderful in watching it is that it feels like it's really the type of film that has a lot of opportunity to inspire and encourage other people, whether it's parents really, you know, whether it's STEM science or something completely different, just like what is your kid interested in, you know, seeking out niche programs like this one that can really engage them, you know, other kids watching it realizing, hey, like there's a bunch of other kids that love the same thing I do and there's programs for this and there's a space that I can go to find that connectivity. And so for you, Tanner and Carol, you know, what are the ways in which you hope that this film really inspires other people to get involved in similar programs like this or just really finding their own pursuits and passions? Um, so as a result of the documentary, I feel like it's a great example. I was like invited to a podcast to speak um, about my experiences um, from the documentary. And so um, we were talking about how it's like, it's very, um, they were telling me how it's very inspiring even to them as adults to see like women who are like constantly like, they don't usually have opportunities, especially in like low resource areas to like be involved in things as great as this. Cause um, I learned that like zero robotics is like a very like difficult competition that many people like participate in. So I was like, oh, I didn't know that at the time. So it's like, it's, um, it's very like nice to like share with others that if you have an opportunity as like great as this, even if you're a bit scared that you should definitely take it because you never know where it might lead you. And it, for all you know, you can like discover a new passion, even if it's not the one you decide to pursue, you might learn something new about yourself. That's amazing. And for you, Tanner? Uh, I think I think for me, I, I get really excited about expanded learning, which is basically the education outside the bell. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there's you know, there's a lot of teachers out there that deserve a lot of credit, but there's a lot of people who are thinking about being teachers or think about being teachers in after school. And um, to have these opportunities given to us to be like, hey, Boys and Girls Club, YMCA, uh, Campbell Union School District, how, like, can you guys make this happen? Um, it, that's a big challenge for me uh, that I was like ready to jump at, you know, being, you know, like I'm like 20 years in the field myself. Um, but figuring out how, how you're gonna make this work within your traditional summer camp. Um, how, you know, how are you gonna get agencies involved? How are you gonna get the, the budgeting for the, for the bus? And uh, how are you gonna adopt this curriculum? How, how are you gonna make it happen? And I hope that that is inspiring to other expanded learning uh, leaders um, so that they're able to say like, oh my God, like I can, I can do this, you know, this caliber of learning um, for students and I don't need a credential, like I can have the impact that's traditional that happens, you know, during the school day, but I can bring, you know, myself being a coach or me, myself being in the space or science, like I can bring all those hobbies and interests and share them with a the group of kids and have the same kind of impact, if not more. Um, I, I think that 
that for me is what I really want to get out there. Cause I, I, I don't think that our, um, it's, it's unfortunate, but I don't think that our like after school leaders are, um, I don't want to say respected, but I, I think they're underestimated a lot. And um, it's often times where we have, you know, actually I'm in with my after school program right now, but I'm stepped away from them. Um, but we have like three and a half hours with them just to unpack their day and see what their interests are. And we're not, you know, completely tied to their grades and standards. We're just trying to help them be better people. And um, this was one of those examples. And I mean, every time I see, you know, Carol, I think about, you know, the, the next Carol, you know, like uh, the ones the ones that I'm working with right now. Um, and she's done so well, and she's an absolute, you know, beam of light. Um, and, you know, she's a very great example. I mean, of, of you know, of what, what our programs and how they can impact our students. Um, and she's also, you know, pursuing Ivy League right now. So she's, you know, getting her, um, you know, all of her applications in line and she's, you know, she is reaching for the stars. And so that in turn is payday for us because, you know, like we might not get a big paycheck, but to have our kids come back and be like, hey, look what I did. Um, it's a great feeling. Yeah. And, and lastly for you, Thomas, you know, with that idea as well, was that something that you went into the film thinking of very consciously about the output that you wanted, the connection that you wanted, what you wanted audiences to take away, because, you know, you have the, the natural charisma and inspiration that comes from Tanner, comes from Carol, comes from the rest of the students in the program. But there's also other moments where you're talking to a woman at NASA who's like, when I was a kid, I didn't think that this was a, a, a career path for me, you know, until I saw the first woman that went into space. And then I realized I could do this. So you really tap into it in a lot of ways. Absolutely. I mean, for me, when it began, I wasn't even as much concerned about um, coding as like if that was a metaphor to me for mm -hmm. like it was just it, it, it would represent inspiration in general, I think, um, knowing that these kids were, you know, touching space at such a young age, just was like such a phenomenal thing to kind of try to wrap your head around and then convey really, um, it's hard to actually digest. And without like some visual, like, you know, even like there's a lot of NASA stock footage and things like that in the film that, that really kind of help, I think, bring it down to earth, uh, you know, in a way that, that you're like, oh, wow, they actually did that. Because at times it's like, yeah, but that space is just over there. It's out there. It doesn't, it's not down here. Down here is what matters. And it's like, yeah, but that's true, of course. And that's, that's sort of what, what I think Reaching for the Stars does is it just, it's a, it's, it's just a, a, like, you know, the thematic value of what you can do with those dreams here is what will change the, the world, I think, and make it better for us all. So that's where the film, for me, came from. And their journey was representative of that. I mean, it was, it was, it was like, like I said, it was my, it all came from my experience watching them do this, you know, um, that, that magic that they, like, created as a team and um, the moments that they had were, you know, sometimes they may just seem like little moments, but they resonated with me in a way that like I never forgot. And, um, you know, when the pandemic kind of began and I had all this footage on a drive, I was like, I'm going to make this film file. Like, you know, it was like, a, it was a very personal um, project for me uh, in a way that uh, like really just came from, from me like wanting to share how incredible their, I thought their story really was. Um, and doing it uh, justice and sharing those themes of like, oh, where do we get inspiration and how, how does it get passed down? And how do we pass it down to the next generation and the world that we leave behind when we're gone? Like all that is all wrapped into like, let's just be, um, let's just do it. Like leave this world a little better than we, than we inherited it. Yeah, well, I really appreciate that. And thank you so much to all three of you for sharing the experience of making this film and sharing it with us at the festival. And Tanner, I know you have to you have to run back to education and, and teaching your students. So I uh, don't want to take up any more of your time, but thank you so much to all three of you. It's been really inspirational and really great. Thank you.